Okay, it's day 271. Things are going fine, although it's been cloudy for a few days lately, so maybe growth isn't as good as it should be. Uh, I got this little A-frame from a friend, and I'm setting it on top of the old ginger soil pot. And I moved the ginger plants indoors, if you follow that series. Uh, these leaves were covered in spider mites, and I rectified the problem. I sprayed with hydrogen peroxide, and I also you know, used some insecticide. These vine offshoots here at the bottom aren't growing explosively as I had hoped, but they were always very sickly because they were always against the wall. They didn't get any sunlight or not, not for that long. So yeah, uh, I think they're growing a little bit. The foliage looks okay. It looks pretty robust at a distance. Um, the shoot apical meristems aren't as active as they were before. I assume all the nutrients, the carbohydrates are going towards the fruits and their development instead. This is the best melon from Vine 2. That's my fist for comparison. It still has that fuzziness that the young melons have and a bunch of leaves developing at the top. This melon is different from the others in that there's a lot of meristem activity coming out of the part where the petiole touches the fruit and is generating a lot of leaves. So we were just looking at that one and here's the second biggest melon for Vine 2. It's um, a little bit of an oddity, you know, it just has this petiole that attaches here, then kind of a, a side shoot that hugs along the melon. Now, that's not doing all that well. It doesn't get that much sun. This is the one that I think got pecked by a bird. It hasn't changed since. And this is its neighbor. And that one was one I advertised maybe three episodes ago. It hasn't changed in size either. Over here we have the biggest melon for Vine 3 and it's asymmetrical it's kind of weird that's my fist for reference it's joined up here but the flower end is here this one belongs to vine one it's also an oddity it's asymmetrical kind of the shape and size of a hand grenade and it's got these leaves coming out and those definitely will help photosynthesize to create more sugar so this is vine one an offshoot that's pretty old the leaves were always kind of sickly before because they never got that much sun so they've always been modeled despite not really being infested by spider mites and it has a fruit developing. I had that hanging on top of a thinner vine belonging to vine 3, but it's grown into its own. You know, it's um, bigger than the one I just showed you. So this is the second biggest melon now and it's perfectly spherical and it has a nice resting spot. The flower is all squashed and it's developing all the characteristic appearance of, you know, a honeydew melon. This apical meristem is largely dead in activity, so to speak. But this vine has gotten much thicker over the last few days. It used to be so thin. So I'm not entirely convinced that vine thickness and honeydew is caused by, you know, tension placed on it. I think uh, it's caused probably by hormonal signaling because this exerts zero tension, essentially, on this very thin vine offshoot. All the weight is resting on the ground. The vines choose which melons they're going to support, and this fertilized one has dropped by the wayside. It looks like it's rotting. I'm going to cut it off. And here we have the largest melon for vine one. So this is the one that I've been showing you as a thumbnail image for the last two episodes, I guess. So this one's a real beauty. It's got foliage at the top. You know, it's very spherical. The development has been very nice. It's larger than my closed fist. It's going to get hard to palm this thing after a few days. So I think this thing has a way to go. It probably won't get to the full, you know, maybe 20 centimeter diameter that, you know, some of those uh, supermarket honeydews get to. So if I take this biggest melon and rub it like that gently, it's still fuzzy, but some of those little hairs are rubbing off onto my skin. So that's a sign of some stage of maturity but I don't know where this puts it in the grand scheme of things or if it's even close to being mature yet. I'm still seeing renewed spider mite activity every two or three days I give it a rest and I'm getting sick of this because I don't want to spray with a hydrogen peroxide filled spray bottle every two to three days. So you can see some adult spider mites crawling around. I don't know if the black dots are their fecal matter or dead ones or what but you know I spray all that stuff off and it just keeps coming back after every maybe three days. So this leaf edge is a little mushy. The leaf itself is getting a little bit mottled. There's uh, some webbing at the edges. 
So I'm going to try to get a new pesticide. I hope the technology has improved in the last seven years and what I get next time will be a lot better.